Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and um, oh no, oh, I did look at the camera but now I can see my head, top of my head is cut off. I'm gonna have to adjust that in a minute, everything's wrong. Um, so but before I do this I'm gonna tell you what our um, today's price is because you can have a little look at that already. So today's price is here with a butterfly fairy, um, is the giveaway is um, Inspired by the male emperor, what is your favorite butterfly and why? What is your favorite butterfly and why? In, inspired by the, by the male emperor. This is basically the male emperor is what the butterfly is called. I just have to think about that myself. So the male emperor, the the purple emperor, um, the purple is only for the one, for the male one. But, oh no, no, help. Okay, I'm going to have to do this while you're, while you're here um, because I can't see what I'm doing. Oh my goodness, I knew it was going to be one of those days. I knew it, I knew it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nearly there. Why does this always change? It's because I knock everything. Sorry, sorry. Okay, let's hope my head's in there. Just about. Okay, I'll just crouch down. I'll be like a little old lady today. Anyway, so you've got, um, let's see, we've pushed this out of the way. Oh, okay, now we can start. So you have got your question. Tell us, inspired by the purple um, emperor butterfly, which is a, the male emperor butterfly, because the females are not purple, even though we're making um, a girl, female girl um, butterfly. You can make a male. Um, what... What uh, what was the question? <laughs> um, what's your favorite butterfly and why? Okay, what's your favorite butterfly and why? Right, I got this now. And this is what we're needle felting together today. Um, if the fairy is going to turn out like the beginning of the um, um, live stream, God help us all. But um, basically, she has got a set of wings here at the back, which is what we're starting with, and then we're going to make the fairy. So all you need extra today is a little bowl of water um, so that you can make um, the, the wings with me together, and then we get that fairy um, done very quickly. And actually, I'm loving my um, teacup uh, needle holders, and she looks quite sweet on there. So I'm going to leave that there like she's in a fairy garden, guarding the felting needles. And uh, I'm going to say hello to some of you who are here, um, much more together than I am today. Oh dear. Okay, let's say hello. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Karen. Um, a lot of you were early. I was late. Carol is there. Um, Karen. Two Karens. Heather. Um, another Carol. Melanie. Um, Catherine. Lorna. Vampire Venom. Jane. Um, Marian, um, Diane, Gina, Donna, Erica, Trisha is there, um, and Pam is there. Oh, hi, Pam. Oh, dear, you witnessed all my um, um, bloopers. Um, so, oh, she lost butterfly wings. So it's nice to see. If you don't know Pam, then you must um, tune in most Sundays at... Um, I think it's 4 p.m. I've forgotten actually. Um, Pam does live streams on needle felting as well. So you must pop over to her YouTube channel. She's got way more followers than us. Um, we're 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 trying to get there. We're trying to get there. Pamela is there all the way from the pond, from the other side of the pond, even not from the pond. No, that sounded wrong. <laughs> She's in, in in America, let's say that. Um, um who else have we got? Jillian is there. And um, um, Pam says, I like all the butterflies I have seen. It is so fun to run about a field with my camera trying to catch a shot of, of one resting. Yeah, that I never, I never get, get it at all. I'm always too late. Rose is there as well. And um, okay, right, let's, let's start this whole thing. So as, as you know, this butterfly is um, our fairy um, subscription box. For the month of April and um, you might have already seen the box being opened during our, our unboxing but here is the box again so it um, comes in a flat box I already had opened it and uh, the instructions are in there which I'm going to keep out the newsletter always in our subscription boxes I'm going to take all of this out now plenty of wool you won't be using half of it and um, 
I won't be even using the felting mat nor the felting needle, it can stay in there, I'm going to use my own, but if you don't know this already, we have got these little uh, eco wool mats in all of our felting kits now, um, making, they're not necessarily always that small, they can also be bigger, um, making our kits plastic free most of the time, in fact 99% of the time. So I'm going to put some of this stuff back in. I've got my own needle. For this fairy, you need a medium. Um, what is it called? Let's just double check. It's a medium felting needle, that's it. That's what I thought. And you get this in your pack if you get your fa fairy box from us. You have got a piece of water-soluble paper in there, which is what I'm going to start with, because that's going to be turned into the wings. In here, you have also got a little bit of string to hang up the, um, the fairy if you wish to do so. Um, and um, that can go to one side, I don't need that. And then you've got all these beautiful colours, look at this, don't they look amazing? So she's a dark skinned fairy, so we're going to use um, this lovely chocolate brown um, New Zealand merino, we've got the dark purple New Zealand merino, we've got the um, brown black New Zealand merino, this is a new one um, is, is in the same range as the um, fairy mix and the cherry blossom and the waterfall. You've got a bit of um, cape merino here, short fibred, uh, just for the decoration on, on the fairy, the white bits. And then you have a bit of um, blue, royal blue, and a little bit of, um, this is actually mountain sheep um, orange. So the blue is because we're mixing it into the colours. The orange is mostly for decorations, but also keep a little bit for her mouth. So I'm going to start with the wing first. Okay, I've got so many things to tell you today. I'm trying to keep it all in my head and uh, remember to tell you. Um, so normally we, you would start at the beginning, which is starting with the actual fairy, but because we have a limited time, I'm actually going to start with the wings, so we can have maybe a chance of the wings getting um, dry, um, if at all possible. For this, you need your template, which is on the um, what page is that? On page four of our instructions, you've got your water soluble paper that you lay over the wings, wings, and then all you're going to do is um, draw around the shape. Um, I am on purpose using quite a blunt pencil because I don't like it when the pencil snags um, into the paper. So I'm doing this on purpose that it's quite um, blunt. It's quite a soft pencil so it makes a nice big line. And all I will say is if you are somebody who likes detail, and I've seen some fairies already being made and um, I know that I am somebody who can uh, work fast, but I'm not always that precise. I think with with this butterfly fairy, it really works if you're precise. I'm putting all the decorations on there, even though they're not going to show in a minute. And then once you've drawn your shape on there, you can lift that off. And that's going to be the bit that we're working off first. So what we have got to do next is I'm going to use my earth friendly felting mat for this. You will have your little um, mat in there, which is absolutely fine to work with. But I'm going to use this because I want to work a little bit faster. And I'm actually using the harder side of the earth friendly felting mat. The top mat is 100% wool, quite soft. And the base mat is 70% wool, 30% man-made fibre. It works better that way round for flat uh, makes. And, um, and that's what I'm going to do. I've just got to turn my sleeves up because they're flipping and flopping around and that's probably not fun for you to watch either. So the first thing I'm going to do is we take a, a wisp of the brown black wool and lay onto one of the bottom wings. So we're starting by um, filling out this um, inside of the butterflies. This is why all the features will now disappear and you're going to use your medium felting needle and I'm um, going to stop that down. There we go. In and out. And um, I'm not, um, I told you I wasn't very precise, but that's not what, um, what I mean by that. I will be more precise than that. Um, because what you're going to do is you fold, you fold, fo uh, stab the wall in to the wing where you know definitely you're inside the shape. And then you find the outside. So by flipping it over, you can see where the line is and then you make that fit as much as you can into the inside of that line. Now it's got sort of little, almost like little teeth 
at the bottom of that shape. And if you um, if you are very precise, then you should be able to get these these little teeth uh, properly in there. Um, and then you, if there's too much wool, just take some off. We're trying to fill in the bottom part of those wings first of all. Now we do want the wool to overlap into the um, body of the butterfly because the whole point of having water soluble paper which you then dissolve means that you um, the wool needs to touch each other and felt and cross over and uh, felt into each other otherwise you end up with um, with gaps in it and when you felt something on you always need to felt flat you always need to lift it off because the wool comes out on the other side and um, and then you can um, go over it again just to make it a little bit neater so if you have got different tools um, available then you can use <clears throat> a five um, clover needle felting tool to smooth it over I don't think I don't know where it is actually I was looking for it the other day I'll put it down somewhere, but um, I'm just going to use a single needle because that's probably what you've got to hand. Now, with but with the butterflies, we always repeat what we do on one side, straight away on the other side. I'm using a little bit less here now, having had too much on earlier. So felt it down into the um, center of the bottom wing first. Find the outside line, I nearly said lane, and felt it down. Um, my youngest daughter, daughter made me laugh the other day. Um, they're of course on Easter holiday break. So, um, but everybody at home, well, actually I, I say everybody at home those days have gone. I've got two out of, um, I've got three out of four at home, but one is at home anyway. And um, two are home because the school's not um, on at the moment. And one who comes home when she pleases other time she spends at her boyfriends and um and she works as well so um oh yes my youngest daughter made me laugh the other day um i can't even remember what we were talking about but it was something like um down the um the line of um yes i think i'm well i'm trying to shift a little bit of weight so i said as you do stupidly you know trying to get some kind of reassurance i said do you think i've lost some weight then she said yeah you can tell mum." and i said really and she said yes definitely mum, definitely i said you know what happens when you lie she said no i said a fairy will die and she said mum, and i'm not six anymore <laughs> which i thought was so sweet um, anyway there you go um Right, now filled in this, this part here at the bottom. I, I'm not worried what it looks like on the inside of the butterfly. I'm only worried what it looks like on the outside of the butterfly um, at the moment. So done the two black bits. <clears throat> now I'm going to um, color in the bottom wings and allow the wool to spill into the top wing a little too. So that is basically, um, we're covering it from the bottom up. So now we've done the bottom part, we're going up into the top wing a little bit. So we're covering all of this with a thin layer, as thin as you can manage, um, but also not so thin that the, the, um, the water solid paper shines through. But we're covering this now in the uh, very dark wool. I'm trying to make this so fast that I can actually make the fairy as well. So I apologize if you're a little bit behind, but remember, you can rewatch this on Thursday at 7 p.m. live again on our Facebook uh, page, themakers.co.uk. That's our Facebook handle. So it's at themakers.co.uk on Facebook. Um, and of course, it stays on YouTube as well. So you can watch it over and over and you can put me on mute. Um, can put me on hold you can do anything you like um, if, if it helps you to get the butterfly done right so I've done that part of the butterfly so now we're going to mix um, the wool for the purple blue cover as follows we take a pinch of the silky purple merino silk which is this one here and um, a wisp of the royal blue which is this one here um, and a wisp of the dark purple wool. I told you you've got way too much wool there. So I'm literally taking the smallest amounts and look how much wool you've got. Um, and um, and you're going to mix the two, to, the, the three together. 
and um, there we go. And it says to mix it the same way as for the fairy skirt, but we haven't done that yet. So I'm mixing these together. So what you're getting is sort of um, it's actually really satisfying color to look at. It's kind of purple and blue all at once, and I think that's probably what the purple emperor is like. It's it is a it is a blue and it's also a purple. It's almost like an indigo color. You also get little white spots in there which break up the um, colors a little bit and all you're going to do now is you're going to cover this part of the butterfly so these areas here um, um, but leaving a dark edge so you're going in here along there I hope you can see this okay on the camera because it's quite a dark color um, yeah, so you're going to cover the butter and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to show you the little butterfly here. There. So at the moment, don't worry about the um, don't don't worry about the um, top wing and the bottom wing or any any uh, decorations on there. Just color it in um, so that you get have now a little dark frame left. And what I'm doing is I'm folding the wool over already. So that I have got, um, and then bringing the wool towards the center. It's a really lovely color against that dark black. It, it's meant to have sort of almost a bit of a. Oh, I can't think of the name now, but it is a really beautiful color. So you're going to color this in from the bottom up and leaving that little dark frame. And don't worry about the, um, the the two wings, the top and the bottom, melting into one. We will distinguish them in a minute. But because it's such a small butterfly, and this is real size, by the way, um, we need to we need to paint the difference of the wings on rather than have them as a separate flappy bit. Then you're going to take a little bit of white, tiny amounts, and make a little mark just here. Um, so that it's going just follow the pictures I think that's the easiest way is just to look at the picture so you know where this mark is going when you make one always make the other straight away so that um, you're trying to work in symmetry as much as you can it's really important to try and do this symmetrical that makes a huge difference to the overall uh, look afterwards and um, I will check in with everybody in a minute on the live stream again but for now I just want to get this uh, butterfly felted so that I can make um, it wet, dissolve the paper. And then you're also already putting a tiny little red spot underneath. So that you might have to have that. You might have to have gone a little bit higher, but I'm just putting it underneath it. Here on the bottom of the bottom wing, you really only need tiny, tiny spots. And um, you're meant to put another little dark spot into the orange spot. So that potentially could be quite tricky. But I try. It's so small. Everything's so small. Right, so to make a tiny, tiny black spot, this might be too much detail for you. If it's too much, then just skip that bit. But you're meant to put a tiny little um, black spot inside the orange spot. Um, I'm just twizzling them. I might have to make the orange spot a bit bigger. Let's do that. Otherwise, I'm going to lose that little black spot. A little bit bigger. Every butterfly will look slightly different. It's just the nature of needle felting. But also, to be honest, every butterfly looks different. If you look them up, there's. it's not just a different photography. It's just a different um, way how they all look. Naturally, it's like you and me. We look different too lucky you right little black spot in the orange and then make that other side a bit bigger as well so that I can fit that black spot inside here as well now I, I um, with needle felting as you might already know if you've done this loads of times you have always chances to correct anything that you're doing and what I'm noticing is on my little butterfly that the edges here are slipping away so I'm going to re-emphasize them a little bit in a minute that's too much black because he looks a little bit wonky now and um, I'm just going to add a little bit more black around the edges 
lift the whole thing, keep lifting it off so that you don't um, felt it onto your felting mat. Hopefully you're using one of our earth friendly felting mat. They are definitely the best. I um, I really love them and um, I, I, I should share a photo of what my workstation looks like where I design a lot of the stuff. I've literally got a big A3 um, earth mat on the bottom and then I switch and change um, the different mats that I want to have um, on top of it. So depending on what I'm working on, if I work on a... So I've got a load of mats. Some of them are the eco wool mats, some of them are the earth-friendly felting mats, some are bigger, some are smaller. Um, it's sort of... I go in and out of different mats all the time. Right, there. That looks a bit better. So now I'm going to add the black to the top wings same as we did at the bottom wing. So that will now put uh, the symmetry definitely back into your butterfly. If it looks a little bit wonky, it's only because we haven't quite finished the outline here. Put the black back in. And remember where the wings split, the top and the bottom wing. And then fold the top over as well, same as you did with um, the bottom wing. Felt that down. You can also use a three needle felting tool. I think I talk about that here. If you haven't got the, oh no, that's a pen. <laughs> I'm not doing very well with my needle tools. I, I've, I've tidied it away and now I can't find it. Oh, let's not use that. You could also use um, the blue one if you've got that one, but you do need to use a brush mat with that, which I have got here. So we could just um, demonstrate the speed of using a multi tool and speeding things up here, making it flatter faster. So this is um, a combination of tools that you can use by using one of these brush mats with this one. Um, it does work on, on the earth mat, but only just. It does, however, work extremely well on the um, on this on this mat here, on the eco wool mat. So you can use it um, on here doesn't actually work that well. Okay, take that one back. doesn't work on there. Right, the clover tool does, however, which we all love anyway, much more. Okay, so um, filling in the outside. Now that has pulled away from the outside here, so I'm just going to add a bit more. It's when you felt it on the inner part of the wing, it can sometimes pull away from the outer part of the wing. So you need to just um, add a little bit more onto the edge again. So work in small quantities and just um, fill the shape in. Do this on the other side now. And that's one of the reasons why we felt it down in the center first. Um, just to give you the heads up, we have got absolutely loads of um, stuff happening um, leading up to Easter. There's so many new things that are on the horizon and we will be sending out um, a special Easter edition newsletter as well. So if you have, um, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletters, now is the time to do it. Otherwise, you miss out on these special um, discounts that we are um, about to offer just before Easter. And um, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna say it now. If you're about to place an order, maybe just wait um, until. Um, Wednesday or Thursday when the newsletter has gone out. Uh, the newsletter usually gets copied to our Facebook page as well. So you, um, if you're on Facebook, then you can get it that way as well. And um, yeah, it is it is exciting. I'm, I'm very excited by all the new stuff. Some of the things I will already show you here today, but um, some of the special offers we're keeping as a secret. Um, I have got, um, um, I'm now in the process of making the summer um, summer weekend away project um, by um, um, yeah I should have it finished by late by late later today and it's going to be really good um, and I will tell you what it is so um, let's just go back to the front camera for a minute right this is how far I got with my butterfly there you go you can see it this way now it looks very furry from the back and that's exactly what it's meant to look like and um, I'm just going to quickly check in what people are um, saying about their um, favorite butterflies. Uh, uh, okay, maybe I should just go through some of the things here uh, until I get a grip of um, the stream here. 
Right, so first of all, you know this already. We've got a new kit. Uh, it's out now, which is the Hen with Chicks, and that's available. That doubles up as a deck cozy if you want um, to use it as that way. So ideal for Easter. You already know, too, that we have got on our Facebook group, Every Wanna Maker, a competition going at the moment. And we want to know what you do with your um, eco wool mats that you're not using after you finished with them. What do you do with them? What do you do with them? Um, what alternative and creative uses have you got for them? We've already got a whole collection of photos. The main point is you can win yourself one of two 20 pound gift vouchers um, and the uh, competition closes on the 22nd of April. Um, so you know that already. Now, um, something very important, and I just wanna say that right now because a lot of you have already supported this. Uh, we have now decided, to, after all, we've decided to do a little um, pack in aid of Ukraine and it is actually to support the um, oh, I can never remember what it is uh, in long the DEC Disaster Emergency Commission I think that's the word um, and it's in aid of the Ukrainian um, um, Ukraine well it's in aid of the Ukraine and five pounds of each kit will be donated to the charity. And I can already tell you that um, because of your generosity, we already are in a position to, um, I can't do the maths. We sold over 30 kits. Um, and so five pounds for each kit will go to the Ukrainian um, uh, humanitarian appeal. And um, if you're coming to Wonderwall, we have now a separate stand in Hall 2, which is where we are already. That They changed it, so we're back in the same hall. So we have two stands. No, that's what. Two stands. Um, both of them are in Hall 2, um, almost diagonally opposite each other. And we will be running workshops in aid of the same charity with the same project from um, that stand P7, which is entirely dedicated to doing workshops and make and takes. And this is what these um, pendants look like in real life. So they are quite, they're larger maybe than you imagine a pendant to be, but you could wear it. Um, you know, you can wear it. And uh, so if, um, if you want to uh, make one or the other design, you can either buy the pack directly from our website, or if you're coming to Wonderwall, you can actually book onto our um onto our workshops. Um, hopefully Alicia will put up a link, but you have to book this via Eventbrite. And um, and it is in a flexi frame. So the, the, flame, the frame itself, um, you just sort of make the picture and then you push, push it, push the uh, frame on top of it and it gets held inside. So it looks like this from the back, quite sweet. Um, and you can decide whether you want to make the large sunflower or the multiple of sunflowers in the field with birds. Um, these two designs, there you can make one or the other, not both from a pack. And the packs, um, currently they sell at um, £12.50, the same on the for the workshop. But with the workshop, you also get us teaching you. Oh gosh, okay, I'll have to sort this out later. It's not staying there now. Um, but yeah, they're here. They're here. Let's put let's put them here maybe so you can see them. Um, so that's that, right? And um, that was um, okay. So I don't know what butterflies everybody likes, but I'm going to. Um, oh no, Trisha says I, I love I love them all, but unfortunately I have a phobia to, of moths and butterflies, so I'm left trembling. Oh no, that's such a shame. Oh, oh, I feel the same about spiders. I saw one today, and I'm I know where it is, but I'm ignoring it. Um, oh my goodness, Pamela says, good morning. We have now, they have snow. Mind you, um, the, the British Isles have snow up in Scotland, so maybe not that unsurprising. It is, after all, only April. And April is a German saying, April, April, der macht, was er will. And that um, basically translates, it doesn't sound as half as nice as in, as in German um, because it doesn't rhyme. But it says, the April, the April, it does what it wants. And that's obviously to do with weather. Um, Monarch butterfly, I love the monarch butterfly. Um, the red admiral, I love the red. I love all the butterflies. So let's not um, let's not say I have a favorite because I don't. Okay, let's go back to the butterfly here at hand, um, the little little one here, and I'm now going to add more of this purple. Um, 
So you use the same purple mix and fill the top wings. Allow a thin line of the brown black to show where the bottom and top wings meet and also a frame around the wings, but only about two to three millimeters. So same as before, a wisp of the purple, a wisp of the blue, and um, and um, the same with a dark purple and mix this together. I can only urge you to use tiny amounts on this butterfly. This is this is you don't have to use very much at all. You, you've got to make a, fa make a fair yet, but you will have lots of wool left over on this uh, particular project. So, so basically, you're now coloring in the top wing, but you're also making sure that you're leaving a little bit of the black frame showing on the um, outer. I've mixed that as well as I have mixed the other stuff, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, if you look at photos of the purple emperor, sometimes they look more purple on one wing than on the other. Um, and leave a little bit of the black between the two wings. So this is now the definition of the top and the bottom wing. And felt this down quite well. And then repeat on the other side. So even I've mixed very little, I've still got mix left as well. And, um, and then after that, all we need to do is put some white details into it. And then we can dissolve the water-soluble paper. I'll show you how to do that quickly. And then hopefully we get the butterfly to dry. I will. I might just go and pop it on the radiator. I don't even know if the radiators are on. I will, I will check that out in a minute. And remember, nothing's ever lost. If you feel that um, the wings are slipping away from the outer edge, then just add a little bit more of the dark color um, to the edge and, and um, felt it down. You can adjust this anytime. Um, you can even uh, do adjustments after you've dissolved the water soluble paper if need be. So felt it down and um, adjust anything that has sort of uh, moved or changed in the process of adding another feature or detail or color um, to your butterfly. So there's nothing um, that can't be corrected. Here we go. Right, so now all I need to do is put a couple of white smudges into the butterfly and then I've got the butterfly done. And um, the, the smudges are made with the Cape Merino, short fibered Cape Merino. Um, and then I'm going to put one into the into the wing here. Um, it's meant to be a bit more longer than round. One here, make that longer, and then make a bit this a bit longer too. There, and then just a smudge here. You don't even need to twist that in your hand. Uh, beforehand you can just sort of put it down and stab the needle in one concentrated spot and then uh, use the needle to fold over the fibers a bit oh that might be a bit much sometimes um the the wool could just literally disappear inside the um the flat uh, felt shape that you've made you just need to then add more so to make sure that you're not just pushing the wool through a particular point there we go. Right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to flatten this a little bit with my multi-tool. Um, Alicia, if you've just tried to talk to me, I didn't hear what you said. You came in and straight out again of my ear. So no idea what you said, but it did make me jump. Okay, so I've just flattened this a little bit um, with my felting um, tool. You can do this with your single needle. It might just take a little bit longer. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was out of the picture. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I've now finished uh, with the butterfly and I'm going to cut. Oh, there's a little bit. See, now I'm getting a bit picky here. I need to just add a little bit more black into the corner here. Sorry, I've slipped down out of the screen. I'm back here. It's because I'm not looking at the screen, concentrating. Right, so all I need to do now is I need to cut the shape out like that and again if you want to be a precise more precise than I am then you do that go around the edges if you've overspilled dramatically then this is a good chance to adjust your shape of the butterfly and um, then you should have a little 
a little butterfly here. You can get rid of the rest of the water soluble paper. And then all you need is a little bit of, um, you need a little dish with water, which I'm about to pour in here. Um, if you've got lukewarm water, better still. If it's um, cold water, like I have today, then that's fine too. Um, just dip the butterfly in there. With lukewarm water, it, um, it, it works a little bit better. Literally, just dip it in there. Don't um, uh, You don't need to do anything else. Then squeeze the butterfly so that the water distributes um, across the whole shape. And you should see no water soluble paper anymore and you should have sticky fingers because that's the whole point of doing it um so now you've made your but your wings for your fairy and um and i'm going to what the heck am i going to do with this water now okay i don't know and then uh let's put a pour it in here what a little flower vase an empty flower vase right okay so now i'm going to um go onto the front camera and in a minute I'm going to pop this on the radiator hopefully um, in the hope that it might dry if the radiator is on um, and to dry it I will just put it so that it's slightly um, at a closed shape so that the wings become look that way when um, when it's dry hopefully in the meantime what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what our next live streams are so you can get as excited as I am so we have got one coming up which is upcycling textiles something very different from what we've done before um, this is where you is definitely a stash buster and where you uh, get your um, old jumpers jeans scarves um, pillow covers um, cushion covers anything you want where you get it out and we'll um, show you how to um, embellish it freehand as well as with other tips and tricks then we've got the cacti on tuesday the 26th so we're going to make some cactus together and um and then on would you believe it on the 29th we're going to have the sub boxes unwrapped um because the first of april um the first of may is a bank holiday if i'm um if i remember rightly so we're going to do the box the sub boxes unwrapped a little bit earlier than usual um right where are we time wise oh my goodness right this is going to be a speedy fairy um because we haven't got much time or i haven't got much time if you ask if you need that hour then um you need the hour so let's just remind myself what we're doing with a fairy i've made so many fairies i can probably do it quite fast if you're doing this for the very first time you probably have to rewatch this whole thing um, no doubt, but we're going to make the fairy now that will have the butterfly as wings and it's good news the radiators are on so it probably won't take very long at all to dry. So to make the fairy you need your um, wire, um, flexible wire which is in the kit and I'm going to go back to the overhead camera trying to be in the picture this time. Oh gosh, oh, on, on cue. This is our maker's box, um, current maker's box, the fox. And um, I've seen some really good foxes. Um, in fact, all the foxes I've seen are amazing. So uh, please do share them. Remember, we have a sub box competition, so you can um, even win yourself a prize. Oh, gosh. And he has got his lovely bushy tail, which is a separate tutorial on our YouTube channel. Talking of which, we are definitely over 5,000 subscribers now, which is huge for us. So thank you so much. Give us the thumbs up. Um, on every uh, tutorial that you watch. Tell your friends to subscribe. Um, if you do subscribe, you get a reminder that um, another live stream is due to come and that might be quite handy so you don't have to remember it yourself. And um, um, yes, what else do I need to say? Yes, well, that let's just leave it as that and start on the fairy. Okay, here we go. Need our um, wire and we need the brown wool to start making the head. Now, um, I've got a, a very fancy new thing that um, I was going to show you and I will, because I think it might be listed very shortly. So, you know, sometimes you've got wire and it slips around. Well, um, we have now um, introduced you to this thing, which you might have seen before. And it is a, a, a beeswax disc with uh, in a case that opens and it's got sort of little slits in there. And you can um, run the wire through it like that and um, uh, d d d a little bits of beeswax get 
um, put onto the wire which stops the wool from slipping. Now this is not the greatest example this wire because it's already not very slippery um, but I thought, just thought I'd show you that this is a new product, a product that we are in the process of listing and um, hopefully that should be on very soon. Right, so I'm wrapping my wool around the top of the wire. What you saw me do was bend the wire in so that um, the um, there is no sharp pointy bit sticking out and I'm keeping my wool flat like a ribbon building up um, the shape for the head and also what I'm doing is I'm keeping my finger close to the wire so that um, the wool doesn't um, uh, slip down the wire but it, it sort of um, gets more concentrated onto the shape that I'm trying to build up. Now you will use the same medium needle that you just used. I've got another felting mat here, I don't know what I've done with the other one. Um, and start stabbing the shape down if it becomes too much when building the wool on top. So keep stabbing the wool down. Bearing in mind you're trying to make a bowl, a bowl shape. So don't, don't um, think of any other shapes other than balls. And, um, and get it needle felted down. Oh no, I'm slipping out of the picture again. Okay, I know what the solution to this is. I'm just going to change the camera because I'm obviously need, um, need this as a more comfortable space. There we go. Sorry about this. If you, I'm gonna get Alicia in my ear in a minute saying, you slipped out of the picture again. I'm here, I'm here. And you can see me now. Okay, so once you've felted it down, you might have to add a little bit more. Uh, remember that it's easy to push it up. You can always pull it and give it a push up because um, the um, wire should have trapped the wool inside, so it shouldn't go anywhere. It will just stay exactly where it's meant to stay. And you're making this head and it's sh a finish size is about two to two and a half centimeters in diameter. In fact, I wrote two to two to two point three centimeters. That sounds awfully precise for me. I probably meant to say two point five, but uh, two to two point three is fine. And if you don't know what that is, because you're an inches person and you haven't got a tape measure, fear not, because um, our instructions have got tape measure on the left hand side, and you can literally measure it against that. That looks like a good size, so I'm going to keep it there. Now the next thing is you're going to um, cut off 15 centimeter lengths from one end of the wire. Um, again, I'm measuring it against my tape measure here and I'm going to be naughty because I also have, no, I have got my pliers. That's where they are. I did wonder where they are. I was looking for them earlier. I'm going to cut these. We're, we're, by the way, we're also in the process of getting these wires in. Um, so that is for the set of arms now. So what I'm going to do is very similar to with the head, this time I'm doing the hands, so I need a, a thin strand of wool and I'm going to use my magic beeswax here, just in case I need it on this one, and um, wrap the ends as I did before, flat like a ribbon, but this time I'm bending the ends in, um, same as before, but I'm keeping the cover really thin, so the, um, the arms will stay in um, the um, skin color, except for a little sleeve at the, like a t-shirt kind of sleeve. So I want the arms to be nice and dainty, or you can make them bigger. And I'm only going roughly towards the middle of it, but I'm keeping about one centimeter of the middle uncovered. So um, let's just make sure this wall gets nicely fastened in and I'm literally twisting the, um, the wire in the other hand to get uh, the last wispy bits of wool completely um, fused into the layer underneath. Bend the end in, keep it nice and dainty if you can. I wrap the wool and after every wrap I pull it until I'm at a point where I can turn the whole thing round, which is about now, and I then twist the wire with the cover on it so that um, I have a really tight cover going on here, a really tight wrap of the wool going over the top and keeping that um, part here in the middle uncovered. Right, there we go. Making sure it's nice and that 
that looks okay. Right, set of arms. So the set of arms uh, needs to be fastened to the main body wire. I do this by holding it on and then just twisting one end round once and then adjusting because you haven't got a front or back of the face yet. You can adjust the length of the arms by just twisting it along the wire, so going round it. And now I need to cut more of this um, wire off to make the legs. And for this, I'm cutting another 15 centimeters for the legs. There we go. And now I'm making the legs. It's quite a dainty fairy. She's quite um, small in comparison, so a little bit shorter than the other fairies. Um, and now I'm making the legs in exactly the same way as the arms. Squeeze this stuff. And but this time I don't need to leave the middle uncovered. So I'm just pushing the wire over and going around until I get to a point. And again, she's going to keep her legs naked. So we're not putting any, any other color over the top. It's going to uh, remain the skin color. So I want it to be a nice, neat finish. And this time I don't need to worry about the middle. Now, when you run out of wool, make sure that you go back to the position that you were in so that you wrap the wool in the same direction as you've done before. So I'm just starting on um, um, a little bit along where it's already wrapped, going all the way to the other side, hoping that I've got enough wool now to finish it off. But otherwise, I just have to get more wool in, um, and start again. Maybe I should even show you that to the very end here, bending the wire in, wrapping the rest of the wool around it. I don't even need to do that. I've got enough here. I don't need to have another cover. So I've got a set of legs here. Difference is that the arms have got um, the bit uncovered, the legs don't. And all I need to do now is I'm going to attach the legs, but this time I'm not wrapping the legs around the main uh, body. I'm actually using the um, wire and go around the legs and you can bend these legs um, down already. And then you will have excess of the wire, which you can either cut off or you can wrap this up around the middle of um, the, the fairy. That should also stop the arms from um, coming down if you wrap the wire up towards the arms. Just keep going round and round and round. Tuck in the sharp end. And now you've got a contraption that looks like that. And um, all you're going to do now is you're going to take the dark purple wool and um, and begin wrapping the um, the wool around the body so that you're covering all of the wire and any any wire that's sticking out that will now get completely covered in wool. Uh, these two colors look really lovely together. That um, beautiful milk chocolate brown against that lovely um, deep dark purple. It's a really nice combination. And um, you also need to wrap the wool once around the... So go once over the shoulder like that and then go once around the other shoulder like that and you can also just go once around the neck like that and then, so now you've covered the wire um, on top of the arms as well. And um, let's move along the body because we also need to cover the area between the legs because you don't want any wire showing at all. So go between the legs and round and around the other leg. And then at some point you're going to have to use your felting needle and just felt the wool down so that um, it's it's solid and attached. With um, the legs you can also um, make sure that you've got sort of a little bit of a almost like shorts there and give it a few stabs all around. I would want to stab this so much more and um, and be a lot more precise but um, our time constraints don't don't allow it today. So I'm doing this in a bit of a rushed fashion here. Um, you also need to wrap the top parts of the arms. So we can do that with a little wispy bit of wool. I'm going to start off by establishing it around the body first. And then I'm going up 
and around the arms. Now, if, you've, if you're going in the opposite direction of whatever's been wrapped underneath, um, you will probably notice that and therefore make sure that it's nice and tight as you go around the arms. And you can also felt that into place in a minute. So let's get my needle. Sorry, so much um, to do today, so it's not much ch time to chat. But uh, what I will do is I'm, I'm going to just repeat this on the other arm whilst you're not... Um, whilst I show you something else and then I can at least um, chat while I'm felting and um, let's just have a quick look so this is what the fairy looks like now uh, one arm one upper arm covered she looks like she's dancing and um, I'm going to cover the other arm and whilst I'm covering the other arm I'm going to show you some other exciting news so first of all we have got another product in our um, all I will say is hold back. I mean, buy it by all means. If you're spending over forty pounds, you get free postage. But we are lowering our free postage um, um, as of well, just before the um, Easter weekend. So if you know that you're gonna not gonna spend forty pounds or more, then just hold back. But anyway, this is an exciting another product that's coming up. We have got two new fairy decoration bundles. Remember those? We did them. Um, we've done them sort of consistently. We've had number one and number two. And now we've got a number three and number four all at once. And it's um, it's exciting because it is absolutely full of stuff, um, even stuff that we haven't used ourselves. So it's just things that I thought I might use and then didn't or th things that I bought to use and then forgot I had them. So, um, yes, that, that does happen to me as well. Um, so if you want to get your hands on these, we have limited amount of fairy bundles. Um, they are... Um, £12 as they have been before plus uh, postage and um, they are available as, as we speak so you can go onto our website now. One is I would say one is more sort of a summery um, fresh colour and the other one is more of a greeny autumnal I don't know I don't want to say autumnal but there are little pumpkins in there so that makes me think of think of autumn um, they can either they can be used for any fairies all year round it's just that um, the colors are sort of more more on the red purple side and green blue side right so that's one thing I want to tell you then furthermore we have got our cactus um, tutorial coming up remember not next week but the week after and for this we will make available um, the January green finger surprise box um, which is 15 pounds it's a limited supply we really do not have very many of those so maybe maybe you need to buy something after all and you can't hold back especially because we've also got two new wool um, offers one is our summer mix isn't that lovely does that not remind you of sweet peas and uh, warm summer days and um, lazy, um, lazy hanging around in a in a um, British cottage garden. Um, so that summer mix is now available as same as our all of our mixes comes in eight colors. It's eighty grams, and you get all these lush colors in there. But then we also have we are also now offering four four shades shades of wool buds. So these come in in sixty gram. 60 gram bags and you get 15 grams of each shade and there, there we have the green the yellow the pinks the blues the reds and the purples and it's a yet another opportunity to try out our, our wool or maybe you're you're doing a theme and you need more than um one shade of red um and um, of course they also work really well mixing them together so they're available now too on our website all ready to roll um when you are and um, I'm just going to check that I haven't forgotten anything. I probably have. Um, oh, did we talk about the Jubilee Mouth? No, we haven't. Oh, it's so important. Okay, the Jubilee Mouth I'm going to tell you about in a minute because um, I tease you a little bit longer. Right, I've put the second sleeve onto my fairy here now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you overhead how to do... Well, I'm not showing you overhead. The camera will show you overhead what, um, what you need to do to make her skirt. And um, for this, you will need um, the, the the purple uh, merino silk wool, which is this lovely stuff here, and um, with a little variegated white spots, and a wisp of the orange, tiny wisp of the orange. The more orange you put in there, the more orange it will show, but it's sort of, um, it's just a hint of orange in there. 
and then you're going to uh, mix these two together in the same way as you did all the as you do all the mixing which is usually lay them on top of each other like a sandwich then tease them apart and I always mix them in the same direction especially when you're making um, a fairy skirt because you want the fibers to run as much as possible parallel to each other and um, you you tease the the, uh, the wispy strand of the new mix and fold one end under so I'm just going to use one bit so that that looks like a nice um, combination here with a little bit of orange in it and then you fold one side under like this so you've got a neater edge at one end to the other put the fairy's arms up and now you're going to dress your fairy by stabbing a part of this skirt where the folded edge is into her waist um, so you need to go round and you're going to repeat this um, um, with another part with another woolly wispy skirt part in a minute so that she has got a very wispy um, skirt here really really delicate and you're going to do the same again um, in the same way so you might have to mix more wool my goodness we've definitely been extremely generous with all this wool in this fairy mix you're going to have so much left over for other exciting projects I mean look there's all that brown left over there's all that purple I mean I'm not going to use any of this now this is like another fairy all you need is the um the um and look all, all this all of this black it's like what the heck have we done I think maybe we made a mistake but it's a mistake in your favor so let's not knock it it's done um get yeah so all you need is is basically a bit more water soluble paper and make another fairy with a with another steel wire there's plenty of wool in fact you can probably make two or three with all this wool that's in there so right let's go round the side add more of the skirt on and felt it down now the skirt um, can be as short as you want it or as long as you want it. You don't, certainly don't have a shortage of wool so you can make it very long. If you want uh, more of her legs that covered then you can do that. Um, and um, what I want to show you now is how to fasten on the antennae because that's quite important. Um, actually that reminds me, I haven't seen any black wire in there. Oh no, no I'm... Uh, I don't know maybe I missed it uh, let me know guys if you don't have any um, you should have a little bit of black wire in there for the antennae so I'm, I'm just checking that it's in your kit but I've opened mine so often it's probably fallen out let's just double check so we have got um, oh no has anybody noticed this there's no wire in in here okay guys if you don't have any wire and you need it this for us tell you what um, oh, I don't know what to say now. Um, if you have a, there sh you should have some of the flexible steel wire left. Maybe that um, is that what I. You could use some of the flexible steel wire because there is a lot left over after you've cut off the um, the leg part. But um, and I'm gonna try that now with that because if you haven't done your fairy yet, then not not all is lost. So I'm gonna cut off a little bit of that wire here now. Why did we miss that? Maybe we didn't miss it, but this is life, guys. Okay, so I'm not hiding behind anything. Um, you get you get me as I am. Um, um, yeah, with everything that comes with it, faults and warts and the lot. Um, so anyway, there's my little fairy now. She looks quite happy with her skirt. You can shorten that skirt. You can make it. Okay, it doesn't show any antennae. Oh, oh no, oh my goodness, I am such an um, I-D-I-O-T. I know what I'm thinking. I am such an idiot. Um, I'm thinking of the Queen Bee Fairy. I'm going to have to show you this one now, don't I? So you know what on earth I'm talking about. Okay, forget the thing about the wire. I am a fairy ahead of myself, which does happen. So um, let's see if I can um, show you. Oh yes, let's talk about the Jubilee Mouse and then I show you what um, I got confused with. The Jubilee Mouse is a little gray mouse exactly the same wool as you use normally for the white mice but it's actually um the gray version of it and you some of you i don't know if you can still hear me i'm shouting really loud because i'm trying to find the bee now which hopefully is somewhere here um yes so basically the the gray mouse is our jubilee mouse gray because it's like a platinum color 
and you can um, make him with his very um, patriotic, um, um, what's it called, waistcoat. I can't find the bee queen, so I must have, I don't know what I've done with her. So anyway, she's not here. She's flown away temporarily. Um, yes, yeah, so you can make the mouse uh, from our um, special edition kit. This is obviously limited uh, numbers and um, only available for a certain period of time. A, E, I, E, um, whatever letters, um, until the Queen's Jubilee. Right, fairy is done. I am going to show you how to do the hair. Let's see, how is the hair done? Oh yeah, the hair is a really good um, technique. How are we fix for time? Oh, we're all right. We'll just run 10 minutes over, who cares? Life's too short. Okay, so let's do the hair because the hair is a new technique that you might not have tried before. Um, let's go quickly back to the hair. And for this, you need the black. Now, it's a wool bat that you're turning into curls. And the way to do this is by um, is by twisting it. So you're going to twist it in your fingers, and then you're going to let's take, push our arms down. You're going to attach one part onto the side. We're always framing the head first. That's what we we tend to do. So get it established and felt it on. And now you're going to as you're twisting this, the the wool wants to um, double back on itself. Can you see how it's doing that? Um, so I'm I'm uh, twisting this, and as I'm twisting it, it wants to curl up. And as it wants to curl up, that's what you're felting down. So you're felting down the the twizzled wool, and so you can work with a strands of wool and start twisting it, twist, 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 until it sort of um, curls up back on itself. And it's those curls that you're felting down. You're obviously not flattening the whole thing. You're just felting it into place to give her the impression of having really tight little curls. And I've used quite a thick strand, so um, maybe I use a, thicker, a thinner one next time. Um, and then just get rid of the last bit of the wool. And that's how you work your way across the whole head of the fairy. So tease the wool out, gently, gently allow the fibers to sort of um, stretch out fasten the beginning onto her and then twist the wool what on earth is happening fast my door that sounds very unfamiliar there's no children here today um, other than my own um, so felt the wool down as you're twisting it um, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about is so I live stream from my um, home office, which is based in the Wilderness Center in Mitchell Dean, in the Forest of Dean. And um, I'm lucky enough to live in um, on the estate. So I, I have the 32 acres of beautiful countryside overlooking the River Severn to my uh, total, um, I don't know, I can do what I like on here basically. And um, this is also where we will we where we're running our summer weekend away now we are over half full in fact we're three quarters full but we have got a few places left and i'm going to make oh yes i was going to tell you about what i'm doing oh my god there's so much to say today you must your heads will be steaming by the time i finish talking um so we are i'm doing a viking we're doing a viking that's what we're doing during the during the summer um um weekend away we're doing a viking reason being i looked up and the vikings did come to the forest of dean in fact namely it was eric the blood axe who um, in 9 11 decided to um, cross over from wales across the river Severn into the forest of dean and he set up camp in simmons yet for a little time with his yarls and um, the reason why he's called eric the blood axe is not because he was a particular um, brave um, warrior. He was actually not very nice man, um, Viking, but that's good. We can make horrible looking Vikings. And um, because blood axe, actually, he's called that because he slaughtered his own blood, uh, meaning he got rid of his brothers so that he would become king of Norway. But um, I don't think that worked because one of his brothers didn't didn't get killed and kicked him out so he became king of Northumbria instead but in 9-11 he did come in his very uh, youth 
he um, he tried to um, make um, an impact here in the Forest of Dean, um, and that's why we are going to Needlefeld. A Viking, and you can make up your own Viking. It doesn't even have to be a Viking. He's going to be tall. He's over... I, th I was aiming for about 30 centimeters, but I think he's about half a meter tall now, so 50 centimeters. Right, there you go. I've done the, head, the hair now, and um, I'm just going to quickly check if the wings are dry, because if they are... Um, oh, they're almost dry. They're not bad, actually. Look at this. So the wings are now... Um, because they're almost dry, they're now in staying in that shape. They're no longer floppy, floppy. And now I can literally just um, turn my fairy over, put the wings on her back like that. There you go. You can have them. I mean, I have them facing out, but you could have the wings face facing, you know, so that the, she looks pretty from the front. Um, and I'm just going to use a little bit of the uh, dark um, of that brown black wool and felt it into the center of the butterfly and into the back of the fairy, basically. It's the only time you're allowed to stab a fairy in the back is when you felt on her wings. There. And then you've got your little your little fairy all ready to take off. Um, the little eyes and um, the mouth um, is optional. You don't. Not everybody likes them, but if you are doing them, you could do these before you fasten the hair on, or you can do it now, as I am. Just a tiny little orange mouth. It looks really pretty. That um, that color that is is like she's got um very pretty lipstick on. Um, so you can put her little mouth in there, and then you use that dark. Then you use the dark um brown black, and make little eyes. Um, you could, I don't know if I would use the blue, probably not. Keep it simple. That's what it, is my motto with anything um, to do with fairies. Always keep it simple. It always works best if it's, um, if you don't overthink it and keep it, keep it simple. Put the eyes in. There we go. And I've got a little smiling fairy looking at you. And that's the end of this tutorial. There is a string in the um, pack to um, to make um, to make her fly, so you can hang, put a string onto her, and then position her. So bend her little feet in, um, bend her legs in, one forward, one back. So it looks like she's flying through the air, like you imagine a butterfly would fly through the air, as well. There you go. So there's the little fairy already to um, decorate your home. And, um, oh, we've got winners. Let's listen to this carefully. Nice, yes. Okay, lovely. So we've got two winners. Um, remember, you get 15 pounds of, um, you get a 15 pound gift voucher. Um, so that we have two winners. And of course, on Thursday, there'd be different people. But today, um, on the 12th, 12th of April, I think that's where we are. Uh, yes, 12th of April, 2022, live on YouTube. The winners of the £15 gift vouchers today are Rose and Pam. Pam Duffy, yay! Excellent. Are you going to get a fairy kit? I wonder. Okay, right. So I have had so little time to look at anything that's happening here because there's so much stuff happening at our end. So um, just, um, oh, upcoming sub boxes, we didn't do that, but that's where I got confused with a bum with a bumblebee. No, it's not, it's a queen bee, it's a queen bee. Um, but I think you've got all of that um, already. Um, we've done the Earth Day competition, we've done the new wool mixes, you know about the new mouse, the Jubilee mouse, you know about our fundraiser for the Ukraine, it's all here. Get your uh, pack now. Um, and um, we've got a new summer wool mix, um, you know about the fairy bundle and our uh, green fingers surprise box last few available to buy directly from us now um, for mainly for the um, uh, cacti cacti um, live stream because it's, ha it's got the most amazing colors in there and also of course if you um, have followed or have received our free instructions on our newsletter uh, kindly written by Alicia then you will know how to you can use that box too to make the pom-pom uh, flowers which is uh, using a reverse needle 
And um, I think that's all I've got today. I haven't actually got much more in the tank, I'll be honest. I am so tired. I just about got enough in there to finish off Eric, the blood axe. Um, and, um, and then hopefully the day will fi be finished and I can um, rest and be back tomorrow. Right, so thank you so much for watching. Well done, everybody. I, I don't know how many people have been watching, but I hope you all given us the thumbs up. I hope you've all had a good time. And um, I will um, I will leave you now. Um, love you and leave you now. And I'll see you all um, sometime next week. Bye.